We're going to look at viable estimation and planning as a root cause of project success. People are normally uh, talking about root causes of project failure. I'm suggesting that viable estimation and planning is a root cause of project success. We're going to consider total ownership costs, not just the development costs of IT, so that we can look at how to make the best decisions in terms of in terms of development systems. And sometimes the return on investment for a system goes away when one looks at the at the cost of maintenance and items like that. I'm going to look at uh, appropriate ways to determine total ownership costs. Some definitions, these are obvious, but a, a metric is a standard of measure. A measurement is something that you obtain by measuring, and a benchmark is something that you, uh, that you measure against. Now, who needs software metrics? There's lots of different uh, people that need them. And software development is relatively young and compared with professions such as law, medicine, or manufacturing. I see that uh, a lot of people will look at manufacturing and how manufacturing works to figure out how to help software to work better, and that's a really good thing. You know, project managers need need uh, uh, measurements so that they can understand and metrics so they can understand what, what you know what the effort and schedule should be, the defect insertion and removal. Middle management needs them to be able to to manage productivity, and uh, senior managers need them as well for to understand the overall ROI and quality and uh, and savings from from software and IT. It amazes me when when I hear statistics like some organizations such as that 80% of their software projects don't ever have a positive return on investment. That's a tragedy. Or that half the time, half the work they spend in developing is is reworked, that is redoing something they, that they did before because they did it wrong. That's a tragedy, but without measuring these things, we don't know them, so we can't make them better. Now, measurement, unfortunately, software metrics are still not mainstream. This is a slide from Charles Simons, and uh, uh, it's a couple of years old now, but in 2006, Howard Rubin suggested that the average life of a software metrics program is about three years. That says a metrics program starts, it lives for about three years, and then dies. Well, that's a tragedy. Uh, I think the basic reason that, uh, that, uh, that that happens is because of the turnover of CIOs, and, and perhaps with uh, the, the bringing in of a new CIO, they're looking for ways to do things differently. But the fact that a software metrics program is an average life expectancy of only three years says we're really not doing it right. Because if we were doing it right, it wouldn't be considered a cost and a nuisance. It might be considered a small nuisance, but, but, but it would be considered as something that actually helps the business. And that's what we're looking at is helping the business. Lots of concerns about metrics. If you, if, if you can't measure it, how do you know about it? Now, there's a great book out called How to Measure Anything, and you can measure most things. But if you don't measure it, how do you know? Uh, you know, if you're, is your software project on time? Is it, is it being developed properly? Is, uh, are the defects being removed? And the basic measurements for a, for a uh, software program, the obvious ones are the size, you know, how much stuff you're building, whether it's function points or use cases or lines of code or, or whatever. The time, how long it's going to take to actually develop the software. I'm talking about develop now, but, but also the time in, in maintenance. Effort, how much work is involved in performing the tasks. The complexity, how difficult the tasks are, and the number of defects inserted and removed. Those are the basic and obvious measures. There's other measures we can look at as well that might be more helpful in some cases. And we can look at other, other disciplines and find lots of different, uh, different people that talk about and can teach us about software metrics. You know, for example, in Six Sigma, uh, the voice of the customer, develop and prioritize customer requirements, develop metrics to collect, and collect data to measure success. It sounds very much like agile development. Develop and prioritize customer requirements. Don't have to do them all at once. Uh, and they talk about defects per, per million opportunities. The ability to measure and redu reduce defects is key to software as well. Now, the way to come up with metrics, there's lots of different ways, but one of them is to use what's called the goal question metric approach, identifying the organizational goal, perhaps to to reduce the cost of uh, overhead costs of people using a particular application. The questions that might have to be asked in order to determine that, to, to determine that, and then the metrics that are used and get collected to actually see if you're meeting the goal overall. So by looking at what the goal is, what the questions are that you want to answer, and then the metrics that can produce those, you can end up with metrics that are useful. Now, I see some people say, "We'll just collect everything," and, and that's usually a problem. When somebody collects everything, it often means they're not going to focus on anything. They've got these mounds of data that they can't do much or anything with. And also, people respond to what's being measured. If you measure everything, you know, people won't really know what to respond to. 
you know, if people are, are being are being measured on on defect insertion and removal rates and improving those rates, you'll see less defect less defects or less defects shipped. So, understanding what your goals are, what the metrics are to measure them, is an important factor. Now, as I look in life, I've got many measurement heroes, and these are only a few of them. But these people teach us a lot that uh, we can use on. Uh, on, uh, in software projects and IT projects. And the first one, Frederick Taylor, goes all the way back to the early 1900s. And Frederick Taylor was considered the father of scientific management. And he said, let the data and the facts do the talking. Figure out how people are doing and what they can do, what they can do better by actually measuring uh, versus just threatening and things like that. Uh, uh, Edward Demings, in God We Trust, All Others Bring Data, you know, we trust people, but if we don't measure what's happening, we lose touch of what the realities are. Uh, Frederick Brooks of IBM originally. Uh, there's an incremental person when added to a software project that makes it take longer, not less time. That's a pretty key point, that we can't just keep throwing people at software projects and get it on faster and faster. Uh, Ed Yorton, uh, uh, avoiding death marches in software projects. A death march is a project that you know, really can't can't be successful. It has unachievable schedules or other constraints, and uh, uh, avoiding those by understanding up front what a death pro project is, is a key point. Uh, Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits, sharpen the saw, focus on improvement. Uh, Stephen Covey points out that sometimes we're so busy doing whatever we're doing, we don't have time to figure out how to do it better. And uh, uh, in measuring, we can figure out how we're doing, and we can see the impacts of what happens if we do it better. And Eli Goldratt, where improvements shouldn't just make things a little better, but should actually improve profit and business effectiveness. The measuring of, of, of items at software and IT systems to figure out how to make the business better is a key point. Lots of reasons to measure. We can measure to improve, measure to estimate, measure to benchmark, see how we're doing compared to others and what happens if we, if we change, and measure to assess ourselves just to see where we're at. If you look at process standards like CMMI, uh, CMMI, there's many of them, but of course, but CMMI has a, a, a process areas for risk management, for quantitative project management, and estimation planning come into play here as well. Estimation and planning is one of the process areas. Producing an estimate, a viable estimate, not just a guess, and then producing a plan against that estimate. That goes into Monitoring and control, watching the project during its uh, during its development, ensuring that what you're doing is is going right, where things aren't going right, going in and applying management skill and 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 and, and fixing it. Uh, sometimes a reestimate is required because the project change requirements change, but monitoring without monitoring and control, we don't know where our project's really at. Measurement and analysis, measuring throughout the throughout the project, and analyzing what's happening, and then feeding that back into the system so that we can do better estimating and planning next time. These are the CMMI areas: uh, quantitative project management, estimation planning, monitoring, control, measurement and analysis, all on a foundation of risk management. These are essential processes, I believe. Even if you're not using CMMI, if you're doing software development or IT development, uh, even sort of seat of the pants by having informal processes for these things your projects will be better. Now, we all know the impacts of poor, of poor estimates. Inaccurate project estimates can reduce project success in numerous ways. Uh, poor implementations, because we don't have the time or the effort of the staff to do what we want. Uh, critical processes that, tell, that don't scale. A project that was planned on for a few people and try to grow it to a lot of people can fail just because of that. Emergency staffing, hurry up, throw in, the, throw in extra people trying to get it done. And cost overruns caused by underestimating the project's needs in the first place. Uh, on top of that, we've got, of course, the frustration of the developers and uh, the frustration of the management and everybody. And project failures. Now, more project failures are related to uh, 